Hi everyone, this is Joy with another Lawn Fawn video. My project for you today is a shadow box card with a twist and the stamp that I'm highlighting is the I Like You A Lotl stamp and coordinating die. Now I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that is cut to three and a half by 11 and then I'm just gonna score that right down the center. This is our card base that we will be putting the shadow box die into. Now here is the shadow box die and I'm just going to line this up at the bottom of my card base because I want to add waves to the top. So I'm going to be using the stitched waves border die and I'm just going to line that up, use some low tack tape to tape that down and run that through my die cut machine. It's going to cut perfectly through both layers of card since this is already folded over. So here's the low tack tape. I'm just gonna move the shadow box die out of the way and run that through my machine. Now here when I pull this away, we've got this great top part of our card that is a wave and it's so, so cute. And then our shadow box is going to fit inside of the card just like this. So here is the shadow box die pieces. I have two base pieces. One piece you will cut using the die rectangle that comes in the set. Cut an opening so you can see all the fun things inside of the shadow box. And then there's two of these little hills and I die cut that from some paper bag cardstock. That is going to be the sand that the axolotls live on and it's gonna turn out so super cute. So I'm gonna start by inking up all of my white card panels that I have. So for the shadow box die, I've got two of those. I'm going to ink blend both of those and I'm also going to ink blend the card base itself. So I am using the Salty Ocean, that's what I'm using here, and I'm also gonna come in with some chipped sapphire distress oxide inks. So I, again, both sides, because you will see two sides of the shadow box in the card, you're also gonna see inside on the side. So you're gonna see a lot of area. So I'm coming in with this chipped sapphire at the bottom part of each of these panels that I'm gonna be, that I've die cut. And I want the water to look darker at the bottom. I want this to look like it's deep because axolotls live in lakes. So I want this to have a lake feel. So I'm bringing in that chipped sapphire, then blending in more of that salty ocean until I get a really nice, good blend on the paper. And as you can see, when I come back in here with that salty ocean, everything blends together nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna finish doing that. Like I said, I'm gonna do both sides, the front and the back. And I'm gonna come in with my card base. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna ink it up on the inside and also on the outside. You could use colored cardstock here and then just add some ink blending to that if you wanted. Either way works, but I just went for the full ink blending. So again, coming in with a salty ocean at the top and chipped sapphire at the bottom. I like chipped sapphire. It has a little bit of a, almost like a purple hue to it, but I think it makes, uh, it's a great color for a deep, dark, ocean. So I'm going to finish blending that and off camera I'm going to blend the outside as well. And now I'm going to come in on these paper bag little hills and I am using uh, ground espresso ink and just adding a little bit of a darker color to the top parts of these hills. I just wanted it to have a little bit of depth and dimension. And I've also die cut two hills using the stitched hillside border for the front of the card. And I'm still using the same uh, ground espresso distress oxide ink and just ink blending a little bit at the top of that to give it a little bit of character. Now that that's done, I have also die cut from Noble Fur cardstock. This is the Bayou Backdrop die. And really it's vines, but I'm gonna use these little pieces as seaweed for inside of this cute little shadow box card as underneath the lake this is going to be the seaweed this is the stuff you don't want your legs getting caught on when you're swimming in the water so i'm just going to trim those out i've got two of them there i'm going to trim out both because i need tons of pieces now i've stamped these images onto white cardstock from lawn fawn 
with their jet black ink it is copic friendly and i'm going to be doing some copic coloring here and i've got this cute little axolotl i actually have two because we're going to put two in the card and i'm just going to color those when i looked them up they're kind of like a see-through peachy color with these crazy pink things off the side of their head i mean there was lots of other colors but that's the one that stood out to me so i'm going to color both of those the same the, these images are from the axolotl so you have the cute little creature you've got the little seaweed there and some bubbles and that is from that little stamp set i'm also i've also stamped images from mermaid for you and fantastic friends that little sand castle is from fantastic friends the little rocks more seaweed at the top there and i'm just really keeping the colors quite simple for the so for the axolotl it was yr0000 YR00, YR01, and YR02. The green that I have used is YG17 and 67. For the bubbles there, that is B0000. And I'm just gonna color all of the seaweed the same, keeping it pretty simple because I'm going to die cut some other seaweed as well from the Shadow Box add-on Ocean with some cilantro cardstock. So we're gonna get lots of different colors. So for this sand castle, this is E33, E00, and E37. And I'm just adding darker shadows with the dark marker, blending it out with the medium, and then completely blending it out with the light color. And I just thought if axolotls had thumbs, they would build sandcastles. So here are some more images. I've got a few of these rocks, and I'm coming in with the T3, 5, and 7 to color in these rocks. I've laid it down the lightest color, which is T3. I'm coming in with the T7, making really dark areas. Coming over that and extending that out a little bit with the T5, and then blending it out once more with the T3. I want to color this cute little crab with the R05. Oh, let's see, R05, 46, and 89 for the body, and 20, 00, and 32 for his shell. And I'm just adding some dark shadows for him. And he's such a cute little guy. And I felt like these axolotls needed some friends. I'm coming in with um, a few fish, W3 and 6, for a couple of these fish. I'm a person who stamps a lot of extra images because I would rather have too many than not enough. And I definitely did not use all of these images, but I wanted to make sure I had enough. I wasn't sure. I wasn't I didn't have a full idea of how I wanted this card to look I had somewhat of an idea so I just stamp and color a bunch of extra images so for the blue fish it's B0000 B01 and B04 it's a really beautiful blue color color coming in and coloring some of these uh, little pink fish and just adding some shading in certain spots and and just giving them a little bit of character now that that's done, I'm going to use all of the coordinating dies from all of these sets and run these through my die cut machine. Once I'm done with that, I, you know, I have multiples of some of these images, so I will just continue to die cut. Now that my paper is dry from all of that inking, I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. Here is the square from the shadow box die, or excuse me, rectangle. And I'm just going to center that in and run that through, and it's going to cut that piece out. And now we will be able to see inside with all the fun little goodies that we're gonna put in there. So I'm just gonna set that piece aside because we don't need that. And you're only gonna die cut this from one of these panels. So now I'm gonna fold on all of the score lines. I am using my bone folder to really get a good crease, a good sharp line, so that way this whole thing comes together great. I'm gonna fold down these little flaps and this is what the adhesive is going to go on so we can attach both panels together. So I'm gonna come in with some score tape because that's pretty strong and that will definitely do the job of holding it down. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to let all of my cardstock dry because if it was still wet from the ink, even this is not gonna to stick to your cardstock. So I'm going to peel back the release paper and stick this together. I actually peeled back both pieces and ended up putting one of the pieces back on because I wasn't ready to put the whole card together to make the box yet because we need to put the little hills inside, the little mounds of sand inside of this box. So I'm just going to put that back on and then you'll see as this comes around, you've got your little box. So now we're going to come in with the little hills and fold on those score lines. There is two sizes. There's a larger size and a smaller size. And again, adding some score tape to those little, the little side flaps there. 
and I'm using three of these. I'm gonna use one big one in the center and two smaller hills, one in the front and one in the back. I wanted three layers to this card and actually I ended up getting five because I put images on the back and in the front. So I'm gonna take that biggest one and put it right in the center, just taking off one side of the adhesive, putting that right in the center of that side panel. I'm gonna take the next, the smallest one and put that right in front and I'm just equally spacing these apart, just eyeballing it not measuring it, but you definitely could do that. And taking this other small one and putting it in the back, but I'm going up a little bit higher so it doesn't get lost behind that middle one that is larger. Just using my bone folder to get a lot of pressure down to make sure that it sticks. Now here are my little seaweed pieces that I'm going to glue down and I'm actually gonna remove that one and leave it off because I need to, I forgot that I need to fold this card together and that little flap would cover it up. So I will take that off, put it back on once we make a square out of this, make the little box out of this card. So I'm just gonna glue on some seaweed onto that back piece, the back panel, now onto the back little sandy hill. I'm just using my tweezers to hold it in place while the liquid glue dries, figuring out what little pieces I want to go where. So I've got die cut pieces and colored pieces of seaweed and I like that combination. I think that's a lot of fun. I'm adding some more seaweed to that back panel and I just keep checking by closing the panel and kind of looking through the front, seeing how everything is looking together. Now I'm taking off the other release paper off, the release paper off of the other ends of the hills and I'm making sure they are all lined up straight and I'm gonna fold that top part over and it's going to stick to your hills. That other side of adhesive is going to stick to the front of your card. One little piece wasn't that sticky, so I had to add another piece of score tape. And I'm just gonna add that on and then just re-push this down and it will attach and all your little pieces are hooked to both sides of the box. Then I took off the other release paper to the other end of this box and I'm adhering that down, getting a nice good edge. I just needed to sharpen that with my bone folder and making sure everything lines up and look, now we've got that great little box. Now I'm gonna come in with that other piece of seaweed that I had to take off and now it's just gonna cover that little seam and it's perfect and you know, it, it looks great. It's easier to add the stuff to this card when it's not a box, like to the back, but the rest of it isn't super hard to um, adhere because you can come from the bottom or the top. I'm taking another one of those hills and adding it to the front of this little box because I still want it to look like sand all the way through on the bottom. I'm gonna come in with some more of that seaweed. Again, that was a die cut from the Bayou Backdrop die. I'm going to adhere a little bit uh, on the front on each side, kind of framing out this box. And then we're just gonna fill up this cute little card. I'm putting the two axolotls right on that center piece and they're just hanging out together because they like each other. I'm gonna come in with some of that seaweed that I colored from that stamp set, gluing that down. And you can start to see some of the dimension here from the back moving towards the front. It's, it's turning out so, so cute. So it's good to have all of these bits and pieces and you can really get it how you like it. So I'm just adhering that, adhering some to the front little pieces. I really don't want the axolotl's faces to be covered. So I'm making sure it's small little pieces. And I'm just loving the dimension on this card. I did die cut and color some hearts and I just um, fussy cut those because there was no dies to that and that came in the I like you a lot. And so I'm gonna add those right now to a piece of acetate with a little bit of liquid glue. And so it's gonna look like these hearts are floating up between these two axolotls and I just love how that looks. We're gonna do that again also with a fish in the background so it makes it look like the fish is floating. And being that it's on a piece of acetate, you're just not really gonna notice the acetate at all. So I'm going to adhere that behind the two axolotls and it looks like they've got two little love hearts floating above their head. Now I'm gonna do that same thing with a fish and he's gonna go in the background on the right side of this box on the very back piece. And he's just gonna float above a little bit of that seaweed so it looks like he's swimming through that seaweed. Just a little bit more glue adhering him there and look how he's floating. Isn't that wonderful? I love how that turned out. I just think the shadow box card is so perfect for stuff like that. I'm gonna add one more fish to the back panel because I just felt like we needed another little creature in there. 
but still the axolotls are the star of the show in this box. Now it's time to decorate the side. I trimmed off one of the little panels on the side of that hill, glued it down and trimmed off the excess. And I'm just gonna add in my different seaweeds that I've got going on here. Again, these were the ones that were die cut from the Bayou Backdrop die. And then I'm going to add some that were from, we've got this cute little rock, but I'm gonna add some that were from the add-on, the ocean add-on for the shadow box die. There was some seaweed in that. I'm gonna glue in that cute little sandbox and the crab. I just think it's so, so cute. And another little rock on the front here. I just felt like it needed a little bit more dimension with that. A cute little fish and some bubbles. And then I've got some more little seaweed that I'm gonna be adding. That piece is from the I Like, like You A Lotto stamp set. Then these little guys are from the Fantastic Friends. Those big rocks um, are from the Mermaid For You. Now we're going to adhere these hills down. These are from the Stitched Hillside Border cut from paper bag cardstock. And I'm just lining it up, trimming off the excess, putting the next one on, and then just trimming off that excess off of the bottom. I just wanted to make sure everything lined up great. Then we're gonna do our sentiment on here. And the sentiment is from the Critter Chatter Pets. And it is so super cute. So it's going to say bloop, splash, bloop, translation and then we're going to have a cute sentiment on the inside so i am prepping this with an anti-static powder tool because i don't want my embossing powder to stick i'm using lawn fawn's clear ink to ink up the sentiments and lawn fawn's white embossing powder and i'm going to heat that with my heat tool until it's nice and melted you know it is melted when it is shiny there's no dull areas it gets nice and shiny but doesn't that white pop on that blue i just used a paper towel to buff off the powder from the powder tool and now i'm going to stamp the translation sentiment that comes in the critter chatter set and i'm just going to stamp that in the jet black ink now we're going to stamp the inside and on that little front spot that has that is the sand we're going to stamp the sentiment that says I like you a lot and of course that comes from the I like you a lot stamp set super cute just stamping that in jet black ink you could also do some white heat embossing I would say do that before you adhered it to your box now let's put the front of this card together using the same little images that we used on the inside of that shadow box card just placing those in and around again i have used uh, noble fur and cilantro card stocks for some of these seaweeds the seaweeds that i'm adhering now those are from the shadow box dye add-on ocean and then we've got the colored seaweed that is from i like you a lot the rocks are from uh, mermaid for you and then the other little bit of seaweed there is from fantastic friends and all of this just came together really super cute i did leave fish off the front because i really wanted that to be a surprise on the inside so we've just got this great ocean card well, not ocean i guess lake this great lake card with all the things that you would find at the bottom of a lake so i'm just going to add a few more of these pieces and then we're going to put the shadow box inside of this card. I will say I was a little bit nervous about it, but it really turned out great. So I am using score tape because it is so strong. And, you know, once you have a card like this, you just kind of want to open and close like crazy. So I'm doing it on the left side of the card and on the back. And I'm just going to remove the release tape. And I thought at first I was just going to adhere the back, but I decided to kind of adhere the side and the back at the same time. I thought it was easier if I held the side of the card up and I could just get it lined up perfectly and just push it down, give it a close. And then we've got this great card. Look how cute the front is. I love the wave top of this card. I think that turned out great. And then you've got this wonderful, cute scene inside with the shadow box card. So my little twist was putting the shadow box inside of a card base. Really a super darling. You have plenty of area to write your message to your recipient and they would be so happy to get this card. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this project. Bye. Bye.